a lot of kids who grew up entirely here don't kind of have the perspective of what like extreme like poverty looks like or like what the like extremity is all my friends who have kind of come out come through like a different country like whether it's like india or pakistan you know asia or whatever who's kind of seen what it's like out there on the on the on that side of things and come here you could actually appreciate it more like when i grew up i grew up the first six years i spent in nigeria like i was definitely comfortable like my family was like well off so like for the most part so be like i was taken care of or whatever but just being able to go outside and see the people who weren't immediately like it's not even like where you have to turn a corner or something you know how like some people say you know in dc if you turn a corner you know, you might end up in the ghetto, man. Like this is literally, you don't turn a quarter, you just go outside and it's everywhere. It's just like a bunch of people who don't have anything. And just to be here, you know, just like is already tight. And just to be able to like express myself and make music and, you know, just live like this is like crazy for someone who like saw that. The transition is crazy um from Nigeria to here um some of it is blurry just because I was very young off top I remember when I got home like to my house in Atlanta I clicked on a TV and He-Man was on and I'd never seen He-Man before so I just like literally sat in front of the TV watching hours of He-Man like on like it was like a special or something and just like yo what is this? Like, it's like, I'd never, like the only cartoons I'd seen at that point were like Tom and Jerry and like some boomerang shit. So it was like, whoa, it's lit America is amazing. <laughs> Low key, I was not extremely happy. Just like going to school every day. It was like the coldest winter in New York. First I was like leaving home for the first time. So I feel like regardless of where I went, just the fact that I was like away from family and just kind of like, and the mindset that I have to make it on my own was a big factor. And then secondly, being in like New York City, the like the city that, you know, people move to to like to make it and to have things pop off was crazy. And the third thing was the weather being extremely cold, just like me not being able to comprehend the fact that every time I go outside, I'm like freezing and I keep, like, it's like, it was like, I can't explain the feeling. I think that's why, I, that's why the EP is the sound, is the feeling of just going outside every day and just being uncomfortable. And the fourth thing was the people in New York and how like everyone's just grinding and working and doing their things and like, there's so many people walking at you, but no one's like interacting with you. And you're just like in your own bubble trying to get to where you're going to do your thing. And you almost feel lazy if you're not moving. Like if I, if I just stand in New York City and it's like and just watch people for a minute, I start to like get sad at the fact that I'm not moving. Like where I need to go somewhere. I need to go, like, go make money or do something or like find something to do. So all that I feel like put together made Soul Glitch sound the way it was like where it's where it's like literally it's from the perspective of someone who just left home who is trying to make it trying to like make money get big get fame do the whole thing but who's also you know like somewhat uncomfortable in a situation like yo like not only am I uncomfortable physically but I'm also uncomfortable that I'm not popping, you know, like, at the, like, it's like, I felt like no one was listening. Like I put out Hello World and sure, I got some like reactions from it, but I felt like no one was listening. So there was like this whole, it was like a bubble of emotion that I just threw into the project. My dad's the, is like the one person who has no part of like this music stuff. Like he has like, there's no interest. He does not really like that interested in it. But whenever I call him, he's the one that always gives me like, like the pinpoint best advice. It's always like these simple, almost like Yoda like simple phrases or he's, where he just gives me like these tips and these tidbits that, oh, that keep me going. So it's like, I don't like, I'm not like, we're not on the phone like talking for hours or whatever. Whenever I call him, it's always like knowledge. So like even when I left, you know, he would just call me and be like, yo, how's this music thing going? Like, are you still you still doing it and I'm like yeah I'm still doing it trying you know working on this now working on that and he's like yo heard the things that you heard the because I always play him songs like yo heard the couple songs you sent me those are the ones like yo you know it's like things like that like he like easy like when I played him easy he was like yo now you're developing as a songwriter he's like yo I knew you could rap before but now you're like you're writing songs so it's like little things you know that keep me like okay tight I'm in the right direction and that's kind of our relationship yeah I make the beat and I'm playing it for Cola. I made this last night. And I could always see as soon as he heard it, it was like this little look in his eye, like, 
I need that. But he didn't say it. He didn't say it. So creating 1111 was one of my most spiritual moments when it comes to creating music because of what it meant to me at the time as well as what it meant to me moving forward even. I think the biggest thing that Lupe showed me like in the whole rap game in the music industry was to be true to yourself as an artist, to make sure that you always keep consistency, to have that constant message and to never lose track of the message. Things have to change about what we understand about why things are happening. You know what I'm saying? What we understand about why poverty is happening. What we understand about why hoods on the South side kind of resemble each other and look the same and people are downtrodden for the same reasons. People can't find jobs for the same reasons and people get locked up for the same. Like there's, a, it's systematic, like it's a system.